Hello again, it is I, Derek from Tomcat Gas Training, and uh, welcome to this video all about this and this. So what are they? Well this is a wireless smart thermostat, and these are smart thermostatic radiator valves. And these are from Tado. Now Tado aren't sponsoring this video, but they did kindly send me these for free, so I could do a video. But before we get into this video, please could you take some time to subscribe because it helps the channel. And uh, don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. I think you know by now, Mondays and Wednesdays. So, let's stop messing around and waffling and let's get on with it and find out exactly what these two things are. So, uh, what is a Tado Smart Thermostat then? Well basically what Tado do is, or Tado, they use your smartphone to be able to turn your central heating and hot water off or on whether you're at home or not. So it basically uses your GPS out of your mobile phone to find out exactly where you are. So when you're on your way home from work it can turn your heating up and when you go out of the house it can turn your heating off. Because one thing you don't want to be doing is having your central heating system on all day when you're not in the house. So as well as your smart room thermostats, you could also use these where the thermostat isn't. So these are the smart radiator thermostats. So what we're going to do now is we're going to unbox these and find out exactly what Tado have sent me. So this is the starter kit V3 Plus, which is the wireless smart thermostat including programming with the hot water control. And this is a smart radiator thermostat for adding on for additional rooms. So they've sent me one of these and it's a release. <laughs> so let's get them unboxed and find out exactly what they are. Now this is the Tado wireless smart thermostat but this is a starter kit V3 like I've just said. So in this starter kit we're going to get the smart thermostat itself which is like a slim stylish thing we can see on the front here. We're going to get an internet bridge to plug into our internet router at home via an ethernet cable which we're also going to get and we also get screws and stuff in as well so uh, that's what we're going to get so shall we get it open and find out what's in it now to unpack it we've got this thing here he says There you go, that took some opening didn't it? So you have to rip that thing off to open it. So, oops, if we lay it down now. So there is our wireless temperature sensor. It's got a QR code there for our app. We've got some screws and some stickers. We've got the Tado guide, we've got the Tado setup guide, and we've got a manual for the installer. Then we've got our Ethernet cable, it's a plug, plug in the router in, and then there's our little internet bridge for connecting to the internet. There's more. So this is the wireless receiver. More plugs. Oh, these are like little chop blocks. Some nice cable, four core cable, and. some kind of stickers and some more screws so that's what we found in that box so now you can see what you're getting for around about 200 quid so let's have a look now in the smart radiator thermostat box and see what we find in there just before we move on one little thing Tado you send a back plate for the wall which is good but why don't you send a little stand for it 
because a lot of people like to carry these things around in different rooms where they are, which we find now on uh, when we're installing thermostats. And you do do a stand for it, but you charge extra for it. I think more people would put that on a table than putting it on the wall. That's just my opinion. So what do you engineers think out there? Should it come with a stand or should it come with this bracket for the wall? Put it in the comments down below guys, I'll be interested to know. So, a smart thermostat box. Again, we've got another one of these uh, tabs. Hopefully it's easy to get in now. <laughs> so, first thing we can see is the actual head itself. Then we've got different connectors for all the different types of thermostatic radiator valves you could find. So that's going to be handy. So I think this goes on to about 95% of central heating systems already out there. Put that out of the way. And in the box, we've got some instructions. And uh, that's it. So that's what you get in this box for the thermostatic radiator valves. Next thing I need to do is actually download the app and you can get this from Apple Store because I'm on Apple or you can get it on Google Play if you've got um, Android. So that's the next thing we need to do. So let's get that done. Now I've got to connect the internet bridge to my router, router, however you say that. Look at the size of the cables they give you. I've had to find an extended one so I can do it. So they give you a little tiny Ethernet cable and then a little tiny connector for your socket. What good's that? Anyway, so all we've got to do now is just plug it into the back of the router and it should start doing flashy things, I think. Well, it's doing something. So this won't let me continue um, adding stuff onto the app until this is connected to the internet. So now I've connected the internet bridge, hopefully now my app will be able to use the QR code to register my thermostat. So it's asking me to please register your Tato Smart Thermostat. So basically, I've got to click on here. And it's giving me my camera, so I can just go over the code. And it's got register, so if I click on. It's now, it says open the wireless temperature sensor by lifting the back plate off. So it's now telling me to uh, Take the battery compartment out and do all that, but I don't want to do that yet. I want to... Uh... So it says open the wireless temperature sensor by lifting off the back plate, remove the battery strip and activate the device. Do I want to activate it? So it says remove that. <laughs> and it says take no high. Well, uh, I don't want to do anything with that yet, though. Yeah, we've done all that. Your device is not connected yet. Oh, right, so you do have to connect it all. So it says, hold that button for three seconds, and it should give us two signals. And once these two little things join together, it means it's paired. Just going to wait now for the app to tell me it's paired. There you go, it says it's done. That was easy. Go on to next. It's now saying my wireless temperature sensor has been connected and it's giving me installation instructions now. But I don't want that. So we can go on to add a device. So we need to add this now, don't we? So again, this has got a code on the front and this is our receiver, program receiver. So add a device, so we're going to pick which one it is. So it says wireless receiver there, 
So we click on that and again I need to get my camera up and scan the code. It's now saying register. So it says it's there. So all we've got to do now is add the thermostat. So we've got smart radiator thermostats. Click on that. Again, register so it'll bring up the camera. Again, over the code. Again, it says register. And then it gives you all the next stuff to be able to do it. So basically these thermostatic radiator valve heads are battery operated and they say you don't need any plumbing experience to change these. So uh, let's go and have a look then how we're going to... Is anything actually connected to anything when you send these out to you? Where did that bloody fall off anyway? says we've got to remove batteries and install this so let's go find out if I haven't already broke it how are we going to install this now then on the installation so I've emptied my little bag out and you get these things for all the different valves so this is connected onto here and this screws on to a standard uh, thermostatic radiator valve but not every thermostatic radiator valve is the same so this is why they give you this kit so this is the Danfoss valve so I've had to find which is the right connector which is this one and you get the little um, screw and nut so you can tighten it on so what I have to do now is take the old head off and expose the radiator pin That was easy enough and you can now see the pin. So what we need to do now is we need to get this connector the right one and place it over the top and then using the screwdriver we need to tighten up the screw with, with the nut. So that's now tight so what we can do now is place this on the top but what it says is this cut out bit needs to go to the front so you can read the actual thermostat okay that's now in position now next thing we need to do is we need to go back to the app now these do go on some um, radiator valves but not all of them so you just got to work out which one you can use now there are some you can't do and you'll have to change the body of the valve and um, so these do fit on but you can find all that information out on Tado's website so if I open the app now it's now giving me the information about the stat so first of all I've got to pair it so inside here there is a little tab for the battery like the other one so hopefully these won't fall out so we pull that one out and there is a little pairing button here so we can, oh it says hi so I need to press and hold this pairing button for three seconds one two three okay and it's now putting up some little flashing lights which I guess is going to pair with the router oh it's got three what um, lights on there now so I guess it is paired and it's putting a temperature up well it puts some up put a spanner up so I'm just waiting now for it to your device is connecting and pairing it's now says it has so I can now press next it's now saying the device is ready for mounting press next and it says it's now connected so once I connect this on what this will do is calibrate itself with the pin down there so I'm just going to place it on so you just place it on, twist it a little bit so it locks in position so that's now ready if I turn the top you can see I can adjust the temperature up and down or I can go back into the app and do it by the app so that is how you connect on and pair the TRV simple as that now let's have a look at this thermostat in action so you can see it says off on my app so if I click on the app and then swipe up you can see it's gone to 22 degrees I press the little tick it's now going to 
load, you can see the stat, and now you'll hear the stat open. And that's now open and running. So if I want to turn it off, click on it again, drop it down, click on the tick, How cool is that? The next thing we're going to do is actually install the receiver to this Ariston boiler. Let's do some health and safety first. Now we're going to be connecting to the live and neutral wires in this boiler. We're also going to be going into this boiler. Now if you are a DIYer, I would be advising you to be getting a gas engineer to do this for you. If you think you're competent to do so, then just make sure you follow all the safe to touch tests and the safe isolation tests before you actually go into this boiler and start messing around with your power supply. But always remember to turn that power supply off when you're fiddling with it. You have been warned. So let's have a look now and see how exactly I am going to install this receiver on the boiler. Now, because we're wiring up a combi boiler, it's pretty straightforward. So what we've got here is our neutral. So we've got our blue wire, then we've got a live, which is our brown wire. Then we've got central eating common, which we've used the black wire. And then we've got central eating on, which we've used the gray wire. Now, don't go sticking your fingers in any of these sockets like I've just done. If it's powered up, I definitely know this is not powered up. So just be careful when you've got the cover off, the wires could be live and you don't want to be sticking your fingers in. So that's how easy it is to wire the actual receiver at the boiler when you've got a combi boiler. So let's have a look at the boiler itself. So this is how I've connected it up at the boiler, at this connection here. Now remember, this is all turned off so I can stick my fingers in here. Don't go sticking your fingers in here if it's not isolated and not done safe isolation. Anyway, this is where we've connected it on. So this is our low voltage or um, switched free connections. There is no 230 volt switching on an Ariston boiler. Now this here is the bus connection. This is where Ariston's controls connect to. And this is the best connection to connect onto because it will fully modulate down the boiler. But Ariston don't even give you this plug unless you buy their controls. So we haven't got the plug for this one. So we have to plug onto this one, which is just basically switching the boiler on and off. So our smart thermostat will just turn the boiler on and off. It won't modulate it right the way down like the bus connection would do if we used Ariston's controls. Now I've picked my live and neutral up from this connection here. So this is the main plug into the boiler. That's our live, that's our neutral. So I've just connected them into there. So that's how easy it was to wire it into the boiler. Follow the manufacturer's instructions on wiring these connections up there. And also the Tado instructions are very, very simple and very easy to follow when you're wiring up to the boilers. But remember, if you're not competent to do so, get somebody in who is. So now we've installed this wireless receiver, we need to turn it on. So I'm just gonna turn the power supply on via this socket here. We can hear the boilers coming on and we've got flashing lights. Now the first thing we need to do is pair it with the um, internet connector. So I need to press this button here where the signal icon is. Press that down for more than three seconds and it starts to blink. When we get a solid light, then it means it's paired. And this could take up to a couple of minutes, but it's already done. So that is now paired now with the gateway on the internet. So let's now see if this stat will work this boiler. Now we've paired it with the internet bridge. You can see it's not flashing or anything like that, but we need to find out what this is come set as because we need to now configure it. Now this light here, when we start to configure it, if that goes green, then it means it's set for an S plan or a Y plan. If it goes yellow, which we need because we've got it connected to a combi boiler, 
it's telling us it's on a combi and if it goes blue it says it's gravity fed. So first thing we need to do when we're pairing it is press and hold the buttons at the same time for five seconds, these two here. So if I press and hold them for five seconds, we can see the lights gone green. So that's telling us it's an SRY plan. So we need yellow. So we need to press this button here, which is the central heating button, till that one goes yellow. So now we press the button, you can see it's yellow and it's blinking. So once it's been selected and it's confirmed, the LED blinked to indicate it being saved and the LED stays solid for 20 seconds in the colour it is selected in the configuration. So now we can see that it's configured. It's now showing it's on. So if I press this button here, this light won't come on because it shouldn't work. And it doesn't, if I press this button now, it should work because that should be the override for the central heating. And it is. When it's in a red button like that, that's in test mode. So now we're in test button mode, we need to press that to make sure it works, which it does. So that's showing us now that the button is operating. So the device will exit the test mode after two minutes. So let's come back in two minutes and see if it's worked. So let's see this start in action. So you can see it's telling us the room temperature where we are in the, with the boiler is 18, where the thermostat is 17. So if I click onto here, you can see the stat is off. Click on this, go up, press the tick. This should now bring the light on and should bring the boiler on once it loads up. There you go, and you can now hear the boilers firing up. And that's how the stack works using my smartphone as the control. So basically, this is the thermostat which goes on your wall. So this is what can be overrode with your smartphones. But we can manually operate it too. So if I press the button there, you can see it says off. And if I press that button there, you see it will go up to 20 degrees. It will go into manual mode. And that now would turn the boiler on. Now, if I go into my app, so I've got the app, so you can see the app is sensing it too, so if I press on that, and it says it's at 20 degrees, this will only go up to 20 degrees. So if I click on there now, and I bring that down, and I then go on to the tick, this should change the thermostat too. There you go. Simple as that. So that's how the smartphone and the thermostat work in conjunction with each other. How cool is that? So now you've just seen all the hardware installed and set up and commissioned. Um, there are other few things that this app can do, so let's have a look at those now. So the first one is uh, the geofencing. So basically, like I say, that is where your smartphone GPS is used to know whether you are home or not, whether to turn it up or whether it to turn it down. And then it has this weather adaption. Now the weather adaption is basically using the local weather stations. So it's using the internet to uh, work out what the temperature is on an average using three weather stations in your area and triangulating the temperatures. It's not a bad idea and it's better having that than having nothing but actual weather compensation attached to your boiler is always the best route for that because it will give you the exact temperature what it is outside your house, not an average temperature of the area where you live. We've also got this open window detection, <laughs> which is great, but not great here because I've had to disable it because we have the windows open all the time and it keeps sensing that the windows are open. So I've had to disable that, but if it was in your house, brilliant, because as soon as you open a window, it tells you, 
and it allows you to turn the stat off. We've also got this auto assist, which I'm going to talk about right at the very end. And then we've got this smart scheduling. Now the smart scheduling, what we're going to do is we're going to dive in and have a little bit of a closer look at this. So let's have a look at smart scheduling. So let's have a look at the smart scheduling. First thing we need to do is click on the temperature, click on the button down there, and now you can see we've got the smart scheduling and it says Monday to Sunday. So this is the beginning. So if we click on there, it shows you from midnight to 7 a.m. And we've got a temperature preset of 15 degrees. Now I always look at in the winter months, don't let your house go down below 15 degrees. Te you could let it go below 10, but it needs more energy to get back up to your 20 degrees. So in the winter months, always have this preset to 15 or between 10 and 15, whichever you can uh, pour up with. Um, but in the summer months, you could allow that to go down to five degrees. So that's what we preset our setback temperature to. If we look in the middle section, I've set the temperature to 20 degrees. So from 7 a.m. up till 9 p.m., we've got a setting of 20 degrees. And if we wanted to change that, it's just a matter of pressing on it and we can alter a.m., p.m. and the times. Let's put it back to nine. And then press save. And then the final part is again our setback temperature, which then goes from nine o'clock till midnight. So that's how we can set our temperatures up while the day is going along. And if we want to change these, like I say, it's dead easy. It's just a matter of clicking on, changing them, and then pressing the save button. So that's our smart scheduling. And we can change all this whenever we like, during the day, whatever, when we're at home, when we're away from home, and it'll all work. So that's the smart scheduling. Now let's finish off with auto assist. Now this is a little bit of a bugbear this for me because Tado want you to pay a monthly subscription for it. So it's $2.99 a month or £24.99p a year to have auto assist. So what does this auto assist do then? Well basically what it does is takes you out of the equation. So if it goes warm outside, turns your heating down for you. You open a window, turns your heating down for you. You go away from the house, it automatically turns the heating down for you. You come towards your house, it automatically turns the heating up. But if there's somebody already at home, it's already sorted out because it knows they're at home. So that's what the auto assist does. Do you really need it? Not really, because you can do it manually. So like I say, I haven't got the auto assist. So when I leave the building, by the time I've got to the traffic lights down the bottom there, it tells me to turn the heating off. And when I'm coming towards the building, by the time I get to the traffic lights again, it tells me to turn it back on again. But it's not that far, it's literally a minute away. <laughs> so that's my little bugbear with this. Tato, why are you not doing it for free? Why are you charging monthly? You know, put your stats up a little bit and then let it have people have it for free. But uh, the other thing I found while we've been doing this video, we have very, very poor internet connection here because we actually have a mast right above the centre. It's actually on the roof and it affects my camera. That's why you hear this clicking a lot and this funny noise um, because it affects all the sound. And it also affects our Wi-Fi. So our boiler was literally 20 meters away from the actual uh, router. And it really struggles because we haven't got a booster down that end. As soon as I put the booster down the end, it works great. So if you've got really poor connection, just watch out for that as well. Because the sat stat took ages to work when the internet connection was rubbish. So that is my look at this Tado Smart Thermostat and the thermostatic rad valves. 
I personally think they are amazing and I am going to give this stat and the thermostats to my son who's going to connect it to his heating system at home so he's going to monitor it for me for 12 months so I can come back in 12 months time and I can tell you if it's any good or not. <laughs> but thanks very much for Tado for sending me these. Like I said at the beginning, they've not sponsored this video, but they did kindly send me this for free. Um, so if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you're not subscribed to our channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. It Mondays and Wednesdays, by any chance? Anyway, all I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.